Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, welcome to Schooner webinar. Uh, I'm Pavan Venkatesh, uh, Director of uh, Product Management. And we also have in the line uh, Nick Prastak, uh, who is the Director of uh, Support uh, here at Schooner. Uh, today's topic is uh, Schooner SQL uh, Cluster Admin GUI and uh, how it makes DBS life or day-to-day -day activities uh, a lot easier. Uh, some basic uh, housekeeping uh, before we start the presentation. Uh, right side, uh, there is a question box, and uh, feel free to ask any questions anytime during the presentation. And uh, you can also uh, ask at the end of our uh, presentation and the demo. Uh, we will be recording this webinar. Uh, so as soon as we upload this, either in uh, YouTube uh, I will send out the link to everyone who has uh, attended today. Next slide. Yeah, talking about the agenda. Uh, so uh, I'll talk about uh, Schooner products overview. Uh, so, like many customers have already used uh, Schooner. Uh, I'll talk about that, and then uh, some of the benefits you get using Schooner SQL. And then uh, Nick would talk about uh, the Schooner admin GUI uh, benefits and the uh, nice integrated hot backup tool uh, which is in the GUI and also the new feature which we have added in Schooner SQL 5.1 that is the alerts. And uh, Nick would go through like the GUI deployment architecture and finally we'll show, uh, he'll show the demo on how the Schooner SQL admin uh, GUI works. Next slide. So in terms of the Schooner uh, products, uh, Schooner has uh, two major products. One is the Schooner SQL. It's an enterprise-grade SQL database offering finance uh, synchronous solution for InnoDB. Uh, with high performance uh, for your business critical applications. Uh, and we are 100% MySQL and InnoDB compliant. It's a software product. Uh, so if you are using a MySQL or if you are in the MySQL environment, so you can easily switch back to Schooner uh, without any a lot of migration efforts. And it's being Popularly used, uh, we have uh, many top customers using it, and I'll talk about the customers in further slides. And it's being widely deployed, and we have great success customer stories. And the other product is the Membrane, uh, which is a multi-threaded implementation of the Memcached. Uh, so you might be aware of the Memcached, which is kind of a widely used software cache and it's being currently used in many uh, large uh, websites. So Membrane is actually optimized to exploit the flash memory and uh, offers persistence. It also provides the enterprise grade uh, sync replication and also it does the immediate failover. So it's uh, really fast and we have uh, many customers uh, using this product as well. Next slide. So as you can see in the, this customer, uh, so we have uh, several customers using both C uh, Schooner SQL as well as uh, Schooner Membrane. Uh, but today's topic would be on Schooner uh, SQL and the GUI, the admin cluster GUI. So if you can see in the customer slide, we have eBay, Plaxo, uh, iStock Photo, in fact, uses both uh, uh, Schooner SQL as well as the membrane. Uh, we have several customers in various domains. Uh, you name it in terms of entertainment, education, finance. Zoom is using it. NCR is one of our new customer. Uh, and Morning Star and also my life page and 37 signals have been a very happy customers of schooner next slide
Yeah, in terms of the operational benefits, uh, Schooner SQL offers uh, huge benefits uh, when compared to a regular uh, MySQL or uh, other databases. So we are the only vendor uh, who provide asynchronous replication for InnoDB, and we automate the failover. Uh, compared to other failover techniques, uh, some DBAs might try their own scripts, or they might use the open source tools. Uh, we are really fast. So we have compared with some of the open source tools, but it would take around four to five seconds, but our schooner SQL auto failover would happen any time, any time between one to three seconds. And you can slash the downtime uh, by immediately failing over. Uh, and we have, uh, with our new product, with schooner SQL 5.1, uh, we have uh, auto failover across WAN as well. And you get the great performance in terms of the SSD, SAN, or a flash, uh, and also sometimes like 2x to 5x throughput compared to the latest release of MySQL 5.5. So in terms of the data integrity, uh, there is no slave lag because it's synchronous replication, uh, and there's no zero, uh, there's no data loss as well as no corruption because we have a checksum added at every level. Uh, and also in terms of the management, which is the main topic today, uh, so Nick would show you in terms of how to create a node, how to remove the node, uh, how to create slaves, how to do backup. Uh, it's a nice uh, visual GUI. Uh, and also, we'll talk about the alerts. I'll see you, Nick. Okay. Thanks a lot, Pavan. I appreciate that. Uh, so as Pavan mentioned, uh, I'm going to handle primarily the more uh, technical side of this webinar. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring you through a few slides um, where we're, we'll focus primarily on the, the Schooner Administrator, which is our uh, graphical user interface. Uh, and then once we get through uh, this small number of slides, we'll move on to an actual demonstration uh, of the UI as well. Um, in the demonstration, I'll show you how simple it is to uh, create instances, Get, a, get an overview of your entire environment. Um, you can take a look at the alerts. Uh, and then towards the end, if we have some time, I'll actually show you uh, some of the functionality we've added in our newest release, which is Schooner SQL 5.1, uh, which is the ability to attach asynchronous slaves uh, to a Schooner SQL environment. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's get started onto the slides. Um, so, when we built this uh, graphical user interface for Schooner SQL, the, the primary uh, goal in mind was simplicity. We wanted to take you know, a DBA's day-to-day -day activities and, and make them as simple as possible. And while you can't do absolutely everything MySQL related through our UI, you certainly can do uh, a good majority of the most common tasks. And, and in doing those tasks, we make them uh, very simple. Usually it's, it's a single click. So, um, for example, if you wanted to bring in a new server into your Schooner SQL environment, after you've installed the software on that server and you wanted to attach it to the rest of the hosts in the environment, it's pretty much a single click to do that. Um, bring in online new instances uh, of MySQL, also um, you know, pretty, pretty simple and we'll actually walk through it as part of the demo. <clears throat> uh, you can migrate databases from uh, one server to another, and again, that's that's a very simple operation. Uh, if, you, if you have a multi-node uh, environment, and let's say you've got a, a master out there with multiple read masters or slaves, uh, and you wanted to, to switch the master role from one server to another, uh, that, that process is move the master role, move the virtual IP addresses, and make that new server read-write where you've made the old master also read-only. And again, all of that is done with a single through our user uh, administrator interface. Um, 
And then lastly, of course, you can control the instances, so you can start them, stop them, and so on. And th this is actually just a sampling of what you can do. There's certainly a lot more uh, that can be done for the UI. Uh, towards the bottom half, um, so in terms of server management, you can actually add uh, virtual IP addresses to the masters or the slaves, um, or as we coined them, uh, coined the term read masters. Uh, and just to give you a little background, the reason we call them read masters is because they're always consistent with your write master. So rather than having to always direct your reads uh, to the master if you want the most up-to-date and consistent information, you can actually direct them to any of the, the nodes in the cluster, and you'll get the exact same thing you would out of the write master. Uh, you can create synchronous or asynchronous groups through the UI. Um, again, it's very simple. Uh, and then changing the configuration parameters um, through the UI. And this essentially means, uh, let's say you wanted to um, change the server ID of your MySQL instance or um, perhaps add a parameter such as skip name resolve. You can do all of these things through the UI, and it's, it's a very simple process. Uh, we also have monitoring uh, built into it, so you can take a look at um, some statistics and graphs that we expose through the UI, uh, primarily around um, both physical and logical. So physical, how, you know, your cores, your storage, and your networking, and then logical would be um, your buffers, your locks, and so on. Uh, we also have integrated online uh, full and incremental hot backups. Um, through the UI, you can do either extra backup or MySQL dump-based backups. Uh, you can also do one-time backups, or uh, you can also schedule them to have that, uh, happen on a regular uh, recurring time date. Um, we also give you the ability to specify the rotation as part of um, creating that backup, uh, that scheduled backup, which means uh, you can specify how many backups to keep on the local server before we'll start purging the oldest backup. So if we set that number to three, that means uh, when you kick off the, or we automatically kick off the fourth backup, um, once it's complete, we'll destroy the oldest backup. So you only maintain three on the server at any point in time. And again, all of that's done automatically for you. Uh, in Schooner 5.1, which is our uh, latest release and will be out um, in, a, in a very short time frame, uh, we've added in uh, alerts. So you certainly do want to continue to monitor everything using your, your typical monitoring facilities such as Nagios or Munin or whatever you prefer um, in your data center. However, uh, a lot of times those don't have the facility to, to capture when certain events um, in a MySQL environment, and of course, even more specifically, in a Schooner SQL environment, when those events happen. And so because of that, we've actually added in email-based alerts. Um, so when an instance is brought up or brought down, uh, you'll get, you can get an alert uh, when it's created, um, when it's attached or detached from a group, uh, and so on. Um, and so again, this isn't uh, a means of fully replacing your monitoring, but it certainly does fill in some of the gaps, and it is very convenient. Uh, to get email-based alerts directly from uh, this particular tool. Uh, so this is an architectural overview of uh, uh, kind of a data center that has Schooner SQL installed. Um, the key thing to, to take away for this particular webinar is that the admin GUI package, um, or the Schooner Administrator that we've been talking about, is actually bundled on each server. Um, so it's, when you just deploy the Schooner SQL product, you're also deploying the UI, and it's automatically started and stopped with the entire uh, Schooner environment. Um, and so what this means for, for the administrator is, once you've installed the product, uh, the Schooner SQL product, you can log into any of the Schooner SQL servers in your data center and manage and monitor and control any of the other servers in your data center. And of course, as part of the demo, we'll certainly take a look at that. Um, but it does give you the ability to have a centralized GUI that lets you manage um, everything Schooner SQL related within a data center. So. 
that's it. That's the short uh, set of slides that I um, plan to, to go through. I do want to switch over to the demo, um, and that'll take uh, just about 10 seconds to switch. But I did want to remind everybody, if you do have questions, um, please use the right-hand panel to, to ask a question. And then at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll go through and, and do our best to answer them. So let's, uh, let's switch over to my web browser. And Pavin, if you could just confirm that that's visual. Yep. OK. So this is the uh, Schooner Administrator, and this is the login screen. Uh, and I'm just connected to one of the servers uh, in my test environment. And I'll go ahead and log in. And once logged in, uh, you'll, you'll notice a few things. On the left-hand side is our Schooner grid. Uh, this is essentially <clears throat> a listing of all the hosts within this data center that have Schooner SQL installed and uh, have been attached to this grid. Um, so in, in this case, it's my test environment. Uh, I've got two servers, Lab67, which I believe is a Dell R710, uh, and Lab68. Um, which I believe is an HP ProLiant server. Uh, and they both have their own MySQL D1 instance. And we'll take a look uh, and talk a little bit more about what this means in a moment. Um, but when you select the server and you take a look on the right hand side. Uh, we share a lot of different information. On the upper side, we show the node metrics, CPU, memory, disk, um, and some of the I.O. In the center, we show the networking related information. And then on the far right, uh, it's your Um, storage capacity uh, and mount point. And so taking a look at all these things is kind of nice for um, seeing the health of your system, but also if you have an interest in perhaps provisioning in a new instance uh, onto this particular server, you can see, see here whether or not you've got the memory uh, to do so, and if so, what size buffer pool should you perhaps uh, provision in, uh, and, and do you have the storage capacity to actually hold the, the MySQL data that would be stored in that database. Uh, below the node metrics, we see the instance members. So this is a listing of all the servers, um, I'm sorry, all the instances that are hosted on this particular server. So again, right now we've got only one, and that's MySQL D1 being hosted on Lab67. Uh, Lab67 and Lab68 are already clustered, and so you can see that the role for Lab67 is presently the master. And again, we'll, we'll look at the clustering side a little bit more in just a moment. If we switch to the dashboard view, while we have a server selected, we get uh, four graphs. Um, the first is the CPU, system CPU. The next one is the memory. Below that's disk I.O., and then the last one is the networking I.O. Uh, backup and restore pertain to MySQL, so we'll take a look at those in a moment.
and we also expose the log files through the UI. So if you need to do some troubleshooting on an environment which has several servers, it certainly is a lot easier to log into this UI and take a look at all the log files. per server rather than uh, connecting each one individually. Let's take a look at the same views, but this time with an instance uh, uh, selected. So now I've got MySQL D1 selected for lab 67. On the right-hand side, again, it is Uh, node metrics, and uh, again, these are the node metrics for the server that's hosting this MySQL v1 instance. Uh, on the bottom half, we actually have instance metrics now. So this is a bit more information uh, about this particular instance. Um, so database size, uh, you know, the, the commits per second, selects per second, and so performance-related stats. Um, Asynchronous master, it's presently configured to be one. And it's not a slave. Um, uh, the reason is connected that yet, and we'll do that towards the webinar, as I mentioned. Uh, it does have a single virtual IP presently, um, and that's that's pretty much it. So it is, it is a summary of the metrics um, for this particular instance that we see. We've also got a dashboard, um, and so now because my uh, MySQL D1 is selected, uh, which is a MySQL instance, we actually expose uh, a lot more graphs here. So uh, transactions per minute in the upper left, we've got some connection-related information. for pool health, NODB related data. Some more uh, NODB related data. And then bottom uh, uh, we actually actually show so some 
replication related information. Well, uh, as we mentioned in the slide deck, we have the ability to um, kick off backup jobs. through the UI. So to do so, click the Create button, log in, <clears throat> and again, this is where you're going to get the option to either do a standard uh, Schooner SQL dump or uh, uh, use extra backup to do a hot backup. Um, and of course the primary difference between the two is with the extra backup there's um, little to no locking involved uh, and you do have the option to do either a full backup or an incremental backup. So when you want to fire off a backup job, uh, simply give it a name select the directory where you want that backup job to go to, and by default it's going to be forward slash schooner, forward slash backup, forward slash the instance number, so in this case DB1. Um, and if it's a one-time backup, that's it. You can click finish. Alternatively, as I mentioned, you do have the ability to schedule in this backup. So you can select whether you want it daily, weekly, monthly, or something otherwise. You can also select the time which the backup will be kicked off each day, week, or month. Uh, and then again, the rotation, as I mentioned before. Um, and this is the number of backups that we will keep on the system. Um, set it to three, we'll keep the latest three backups. So I'm just going to do a quick one. off backup. So click finish. Firm. You get a notification that a new job or a new action has taken uh, or occurred in the environment. You also get a notification down here in the tasks pane. Uh, and over here uh, in the top schooner backup section, you can actually see the progress of this backup job. If I refresh it, it's 9% complete. And now it's completely done. On the restore side, uh, because the instance is actually up and running, um, I probably won't won't go through an actual restore, but I will show you what it looks like to do one. <clears throat> so give the restore job a name, uh, select where the backup directory is. Uh, in this case, it's a local backup directory under Schooner Backup DB1, uh, as we saw. Uh, and you can select the, the actual files within the backup that you want to restore. So in this case, it's a full extra backup. And if I wanted to automatically connect this server to an async master as part of the restore job, I have that ability right here uh, in this dialog. Um, in this case, I wouldn't want to do that, um, but I actually won't fire off this, this job at all um, uh, for demonstration purposes. And 
lastly, uh, again, with, with an Selected. If we go to logs and we click um, the Schooner SQL tab, you can actually see a list of the log files uh, that pertain to MySQL. So in this particular case, we've only got one message in the latest log, and that is my license will expire in 94 hours. Uh, when you do install our product, it does run for 96 hours without a license key, and eventually will shut off. So that's pretty much the visual side of things, the overview, and it also does cover the, the backups and restores. Uh, let's take a look at the clustering side. So as I mentioned, uh, I do have MySQL D1 on Lab 67 and Lab 68 together within a synchronous replication group. This means any changes that occur on Lab 67 are synchronously replicated over to Lab 68. If we take a look at the group, on the right hand side, we've got some group metrics. So it tells us uh, uh, it is synchronous. Uh, tells us the interface that's being used for replication. Uh, it'll give us a listing of the virtual IP addresses that are being utilized. Um, and then down below under instance members, uh, again, a bit more of the information it tells you who's the master, who's the slave. Status up. Um, the Performance column uh, is actually kind of nice. If any of the nodes within your synchronous environment, your synchronous cluster, uh, are performing slower than the other nodes, it'll actually be listed here um, under the performance column. We'll actually call out that it is slow. And then you do have the ability to pull that node from the cluster, resolve whatever issue, um, perhaps the rate is degraded or, or, or some other uh, issue going on. And then once that issue is resolved, you can reattach it um, to the replication group. We'll automatically make sure that all the data is synchronized and then move whichever virtual IPs um, were assigned to that server back over to it. Um, and again, all of that's automatic and it's handled by us. You do have a couple different um, options when you have a replication group uh, selected. You could attach a new instance to this group. Um, 
you can configure the settings of the group itself. Uh, and then you do have some asynchronous controls as well. And we'll take a look at those. Um, a little bit more here. We have an actual instance selected. So I have MySQL D1 uh, selected for Lab 67. And as I mentioned in the slide deck, you do have a lot of different um, controls here. You can stop the instance. You can start it. You can do a restart, which is a stop and a start all in a single command. Uh, you can configure the instance itself. So this is making changes, and of course, um, I'm sure you're all very familiar with this. This is uh, uh, your Maya.cnf. And you can make changes to it directly from this UI. So select something you want to change, such as the server ID, change it to something new, and hit the apply button. It'll go through and take care of that for you. Uh, I did mention that we do have the ability to migrate an instance from one server to another. Uh, that can be done from this button. Uh, when you select to migrate an instance, you select uh, which instance you want to migrate it from and then which instance you want to be the target. Um, once you hit the apply button, it'll actually fully move that instance from point A to point B uh, while keeping the instance online as long as possible. So from the source, it's going to keep it online but start replicating all the data over to the target. Once the target is fully in sync, only then will it move the virtual IPs over to the target. And then lastly, once the, the source is completely unutilized, will it stop that instance and purge the data so that it's fully migrated from one server to another. Uh, and this is kind of nice. Uh, it's a nice functionality for when you perhaps want to uh, phase out a particular server in the cluster and replace it with a new server. Uh, you can do that using the migrate feature. Uh, under the synchronous, uh, synchronous options panel here, um, you have the ability to attach this instance to a group. Uh, it's already attached to one, so we can't do that. You can detach it from the existing group, uh, but this is grayed out because you first need to stop the instance. Uh, and you can also set the node as master, um, and in this case, it already is master. On the asynchronous side, uh, you have the ability to set uh, the instance as a master, set it as a slave, uh, or reset um, the master or the slave. And of course, depending 
on what going on. on the environment, some of these buttons may be grayed out. You may not be allowed to remove the instance until it's stopped, for example. Uh, I did mention in the slide deck as well that we do have, have alerts. Uh, um, so we've got a lot of different alerts that can be configured. Uh, these are email-based alerts. Um, so, so you can see kind of a list of the last, last few alerts that have been fired based on some of the activity uh, I've been doing in this environment. For example, um, MySQL D1 instance reached MySQL ready state on lab 68. And so, so for each one of these, you have the option to say, I want to be emailed when this particular event happens or I don't want to be emailed. Uh, so that, that primarily covers most of the visual side of the UI um, uh, for within a data center. So again, this is two servers, two instances. They're synchronously replicating You've got all this control, all this visibility. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show is, is uh, what it would be like to have a DR site uh, in your environment. So I've got this second tab of my UI open. <clears throat> and as part of this second tab, This is a uh, completely separate server. It's not part of the existing Schooner grid. And so we can imagine that this, uh, this MySQL D1 instance on the N570 server is actually in another data center in another state. Um, it's presently running uh, at the moment. Uh, I've already taken an extra backup of the data uh, from my SQL D1 at lab 67. it over here and restored it to this instance. So really the only thing to do now is to attach this instance as an asynchronous slave to uh, the, the Lab67 and Lab68 uh, group. And so let's, let's go through that process. So first thing we want to do is click the Set Slave. button 
and uh, it'll tell you what the server ID is of this particular instance. We then want to, want to select where the asynchronous master lives. So in this case, it's actually going to be a remote cluster. So I click the change cluster option, and I'll give the IP of lab 67. And down here we get a notification. It successfully connected to that remote cluster. It auto-populated the name of the replication group, um, the IP address, and so on. We want to give credentials so that uh, we do have uh, the proper rights to actually replicate asynchronously across. And then we need the map. log file and master uh, log position from that, that backup I had taken. So that's the log file. And that's the position. And then once you've filled in all this data, one of the, the common problems with working with uh, stock MySQL is you'll issue that change master command, and then you'll issue start slave, and you kind of have to wait to see something pop up. And the error log. Or you have to wait for um, your, your so slave status to give you some kind of indication that there's uh, something wrong. We've added a verify button up here to, to hopefully make things a little bit easier. We check back to make sure that these settings make sense um, for proceeding. So everything looks okay according to the verify button. Um, as an example, let's say that Lab 67. Uh, has the same server ID as uh, the N570 server. We'll detect that and tell you in advance the server IDs are matching. You can't have this. It's not a supported configuration. Make that change before you proceed. And so it saves you a little bit of grief, a little bit of headache um, before you move forward. But once we've got the whole configuration done and everything good and you hit the verify button. Hit the apply button. It'll go through and, and it's trying to set now. Uh, um, this particular server as an async failover slave to, to the, the other replication group that, that we have running uh, in, in, on Lab 60. And so it's actually taking the instance off the line, uh, it's making the changes, and then it'll bring it back online. The 
product that I'm actually demonstrating today is our Schooner SQL 5.1 product. And so it does have the alerts. Um, it does have the ability to easily connect asynchronously. your DR site to your main site. Um, but some other nice features are uh, if the async master on your primary site, so in this case Lab 67, happen to fail, remote site uh, node, which is N570, um, and it's in another state, it'll automatically reconnect to Lab 68. So that, that asynchronous connection will be broken. between Lab 67 and N570. And it'll automatically be reconnected to Lab 68. Um, this is not something you get with stock MySQL. So this is automated failover of your asynchronous node. The next thing I wanted to point out is if I had another node here, let's say N571, and it was also in a synchronous replication group. Um, and it was receiving its data from Uh, the MySQL D1 at Lab 67 side. If this particular N570 instance happened to fail as an asynchronous slave, the role of the asynchronous slave would automatically fail over to the other node as well. So again, this is uh, automatic failover of either your asynchronous master or your asynchronous slave. So again, high availability as much as possible. We try to give it to you. We also add in the simplicity of giving you all of this functionality through the UI. Um, and I guess the last thing to note uh, before I close is anything you can do through this UI, you can also do through the Schooner CLI. Um, and the Schooner CLI is a, a menu-based CLI system that gives you, uh, again, all of the power and control that you have um, through this particular graphical user interface. Uh, so with that, uh, I I will open it up for questions. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, uh, and I'll go through and do my best to answer them. And Nick, uh, you can switch back to the uh, slide. Uh, we have the 
contact details uh, so we can talk about that that as well Right, so uh, as Pavan pointed out, we do have um, our contact information here on the screen. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email either one of us, um, and we'll certainly get a response back to you promptly. And uh, uh, if you can switch to the last slide, uh, I have a, a there's a free trial uh, which I'll. Talk about. Yeah, so you can uh, contact our uh, sales team if you have uh, any questions. Uh, and we also have a 21-day free trial uh, to test out this particular uh, Schooner SQL software, as well as the nice GUI uh, which uh, Nick presented. Uh, you can enter, like, click on that particular link and enter uh, uh, all the required details, and our sales team uh, would contact you. And also, I encourage uh, everyone uh, to contact us, and we'll help solve your problem uh, in terms of uh, setting up the Schooner environment and also the GUI. OK, Bob. And it seems like uh, there's no questions at this time. so. Um, if there's nothing else, we can go ahead and conclude the webinar. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, so much for attending this webinar, and uh, we'll uh, end this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care.